Hi everyone, my name's Dominique and I have recently started Invisalign and I really wanted to just sort of diarise how my journey's been going, um, just to kind of, I suppose, have a bit of a record as well as to how my teeth are tracking over time. So just to give you a bit of background, I started my Invisalign journey seven weeks ago. I'm now on my fourth set of trays, so I'm changing my trays every two weeks. I have been prescribed to have 15 trays for the bottom teeth and 23 for the top. So really my journey should be finished by a sort of early January next year. That's if I don't need any refinements. So just to give you a bit of background as well, I actually had braces when I was a teenager. So hmm, without giving my age away quite a long time ago. And I was one of those people that were given a retainer. I probably wore them for about a month, stopped wearing them, and then my teeth shifted over time. And I noticed that, especially once I got my wisdom teeth, that my bottom teeth in particular started to shift. If you can see here, they're really pretty crooked. So I really had thought about getting a Visalign or some kind of clear retainer or brace for quite some time. So I've kind of just started the journey over the last seven weeks. In terms of costs and you know the choice of dentist and all that sort of stuff so I'm based in Sydney Australia I decided to go with um, my dentist and it's not actually an orthodontist but it's a dentist that kind of specializes in cosmetic dentistry as well he just had really good reviews and I just got a really good feeling from him when I went in for the consultation and he seemed to know what he's talking about so in terms of what I will probably need after the Invisalign journey, I've got quite a bit of chipping on my top teeth, like especially the front one and at the side as well. So I'm probably going to need some composite bonding as well. I'm also probably a little bit vain in that, I don't know if you can notice here, but this tooth here, the gum line is slightly lower than the other tooth. So I'm going to get gum contouring as well. I don't know how much all, that, all those extras are going to be, but in terms of the actual Invisalign package, that I've got. I went for the moderate package, which I believe gives you up to 25 trays and then up to two refinements. He quoted me 6,500 Australian dollars, but it was also going to be a little bit cheaper if I decided to pay up front, which I decided to do. So it was $6,270 all up front. So I paid it now, so it better work. But so far, so good. In terms of what I got when I went to my appointment, so when I actually went in for the first appointment after I had all my scans and everything and I saw how my teeth were going to look at the end, they went away, sent off my scans and everything was approved to go to Invisalign and then I got my first two sets of trays when I went in for my first appointment. They also had to put on a number of attachments on my teeth, which I don't know if you can see here, Right here, there's one, and they're there. So I've got 15 attachments or buttons all together. Basically, those attachments are really to help the teeth move once you've got your trays in. I also had to have something called IPR, which I believe stands for interproximal reduction, which is basically where they file in between your teeth, like gentle filing. Well, I say gentle, um, <laughs> but a bit of filing in between your teeth to help your teeth move. I had to have that between on two of my bottom teeth because, as I mentioned before, there's lots of crowd in there. That hurt a lot. Putting on the attachments didn't. It was uncomfortable because they've literally got like these big sort of retractor things on your mouth and you had to just keep your mouth open for about half an hour. So it was uncomfortable, but it didn't hurt. But the IPR, oh my God, oh my God, the pain was bad. And even the dentist said to me, look, it's, it apparently it doesn't normally hurt. I think it was just me in that, because my teeth were so crowded, there just wasn't much space in between for him to file. And he kind of used like an old school file. It was literally like a nail file. And he was just sort of sawing in between my teeth. And yeah, it, it wasn't fun. It was fun at all. I'm laughing now, probably because I got PTSD from it, but it was painful. I'm not going to lie to you. To be honest, when he was doing that, I kind of thought to myself, what the hell am I doing? Like if I hadn't, you know, paid over six grand up front, I probably would have just said to stop it. But you know what? It's been seven weeks and I don't regret it now, but that was probably the most painful part of the whole experience altogether. So once he did finally manage to get the file through my teeth and the IPR was done, he put on my first set of retainers and showed me how to actually take them out and put them back in. So I was told with the retainers and I've actually got them in now and I won't take them off the camera because it's pretty gross. But the best way to take your retainers out is to hook your finger, one of your fingers at the back of the retainers like so. So I'll just show you. And then you just kind of pull it up 
I, I'm not going to take it out right now, but you kind of pull it up on one side, pull it up on the other side and take it out and you do it with the top as well. And to be honest, I don't have any problems taking out um, my retainers. I've kind of seen a few videos where people really struggle and they have to use some appliances. I've not had to do that. And as I said, I'm on my full set of trays. But yeah, what they gave me in terms of when I went to the appointment, so obviously they gave me my first two set of trays. They also gave me a few of these. They're called munchies. And this is really to help you set your retainer. So once you put your braces back in, you need to really like just bite down. So I don't know if you can see here, but there's different curves. So there's a big, this one, this bit here is for your top teeth. That bit there's for your bottom. And then this bit here's for the back. So you kind of just bite down like so. So I'll here's go like that. So you cut on that and just bite down. And you do the same for the top. And I was told that I should do this for about 10 minutes a day. So basically every time you take your retainers out, do this for a few minutes, which has been fine to do as well. As I mentioned, um, some people do say that they have issues taking out their retainer. I didn't have it, I haven't had any so far, but they also gave me one of these, which is basically called an ortho key. And that is to help you to hook the retainers at the back if you struggle, but as you can see, it's been in the packet. I've not needed to use it, so yeah, I've been all good. So the other thing they gave me, in addition to the two trays, was this little bag, which came with this little box, and it basically just had some instructions on how to kind of keep your retainers clean. And then I also got this little retainer case as well. In terms of what the dentist told me to do for those first couple of weeks, in addition to kind of biting down on the munchie when you set your retainers, he said to wear your retainers for at least 22 hours a day. So you're basically only taking them out to kind of eat or to brush your teeth or to drink. Um, the only thing that you're meant to drink with your retainers in is water. Now, I'm not going to lie to you, I have not been sticking to that. You know, on nights out, I've been drinking wine or vodka, but I make sure I drink it through a straw. I mean, the only thing you've got to make sure that if you are kind of drinking with any drinks like that is to just brush your teeth as soon as you can. You're also meant to, when you take out your retainers and eat, make sure that you just rinse your mouth afterwards straight away, floss in between and then brush. And then to also clean your retainers, he mentioned that what I can do is soak it in one part water, one part white vinegar, and then brush once you've kind of taken them out after say 15 minutes, rinse them off and then brush them gently with toothpaste. So I do that quite a lot. In terms of the 22 hours, I am kind of reaching that on most days. There's been a few times when I've been out on nights out or for dinner that I've kind of probably got done like 20, 21, but I'm trying my best to do the 22 hours. And really it's because I spent a whole lot of money on this and <laughs> I can't waste that kind of money. So I want to make sure that it works. The other thing that they mentioned to do as well is that when you eat, to make sure you always put your retainers in this case. He's heard cases where people might wrap them up in a napkin or a tissue and then you kind of put it on the table at a restaurant and then the waiter or waitress then takes the retainers away. So. I'd make sure that I'm quite religious. But to be honest, it's pretty easy for me because I don't go out that much and I work from home. So they're pretty much in my mouth all the time. And as I said, when I have been out for drinks, a lot of the times that I've been drinking through a straw, I think the only thing that you probably don't want to drink is like staining drinks like red wine or coffee. And you also shouldn't drink hot drinks with them as well. But yeah, I've been managing so far with that. So in terms of the first sort of 24 hours or the first week, First 24 hours were a little bit painful and a bit uncomfortable. You could definitely notice, or I could notice, that there was something in my mouth. My mouth was really dry, just felt really uncomfortable, and my teeth just felt quite sensitive after having all the attachments put on my teeth. In terms of eating, I had to eat something quite soft. I think I had like salmon and like mashed potatoes. I couldn't eat anything hard for at least a week. The first week, as I said as well, it was uncomfortable. I wouldn't say it was painful, it was just uncomfortable. Like I could feel and notice that there was something new in my mouth. And I just noticed that my mouth was getting really, really dry. A lot of people say that they experienced a lot of pain the first 24 hours. I didn't really experience that much pain. It was just uncomfortable. But I, again, I think maybe because the IPR was just so bloody painful, everything else just seemed like a walk in the park. But in terms of what it's been like since that, so. The first um, two trays, I said I kind of was at home. Then I went back in to see the dentist after wearing my second tray. 
And that's when they gave me a bit more information in terms of what to do next. So they then gave me details for the Invisalign app, which is what I now need to do in terms of, I suppose, making sure that I don't have to go in all the time. So on the Invisalign app, there's something called My Care, where you can basically scan pictures of your teeth. So every two weeks, like the night before I'm due to change my trays, I need to take a number of different pictures via My Care and the Invisalign app. And then that sends directly to my dentist. And then they'll just tell me if I can go on to the next set of trays. And I went back into that appointment. They gave me four more sets of trays. So that was 10 weeks worth of trays. And then I'll go back in 10 weeks in person. But in between that, every two weeks, I'll just send them the pictures. But in terms of like how it's been since then, it's been fine. You know, you do get a bit of a lisp. That's one thing that I notice and I notice it now. For example, if I'm talking for a while, I have a slight lisp but only I really notice it. It was pretty bad the first couple of weeks, but now it's not so bad. But, you know, as I said, I work from home, so I'm not really engaging with people too much in the day unless I'm having a Zoom call with clients or with my team. But unless I say to them, I've got Invisalign, which sometimes I have said because I was really self-conscious about it, they didn't notice. I think they just thought she talks with a slight lisp. But other than that, it's really, it's really good to use. I'm managing, as I said, mainly the t- sort of 20, 21, 22 hours a day. It actually feels more comfortable having them in than out, to be honest. And I think it's because of the attachments. Your teeth just feel a little bit sensitive. One thing that I have noticed that my dental hygiene is impeccable now because and you don't realise, I think, how unclean your teeth can be until you get Invisalign. Like I'm flossing pretty much two, three, sometimes four times a day. And because I've got so many attachments, I think I'm more conscious about food being stuck in between my teeth. In terms of what I'm noticing in movement, I'm noticing a bit of movement on my bottom teeth, not so much on the top teeth yet, but you know, it's early days. And the only real downside that I've noticed so far is that when you're wearing makeup, which I do like wearing makeup, can't really wear lipstick because it seems to show up on your trays. But other than that, I'm finding kind of wearing it for the sort of 20, 21, 22 hours a day pretty easy. It's pretty easy to keep them clean. And yeah, it's not super painful for me. But maybe, as I said, with the IPR, that traumatised me and I just don't notice the pain. It can be uncomfortable when you change your trays for the first sort of day or two. But it's not unbearable pain for me. But yeah, that's kind of how my journey's going so far. I'm going to probably do some regular updates as well just to see how things are going, see how things are tracking. My next appointment with my dentist is on the 26th of May when I will be finishing trace six. So I will update you on how that goes and how many more trays that I'll be getting after that and just to see how everything's tracking. But if you have any questions about anything that I've covered here today or anything that you'd like me to cover in the future, just drop a comment below.